Hello friends, it's Dr. Manish Bhandari from the Department of Mechanical Engineering, Jain and Vyas University, Jodhpur. Today we are going to discuss the term factor of safety. Factor of safety is a very important term when we discuss the subject machine design. Factor of safety is how much could a system withstand beyond the expected loads or actual loads. For example, if we design a 52-seater bus, we actually have to design the bus for 60 or 70 passengers. The reason is very simple that the bus might be overloaded in the practical conditions. That is why it is a kind of reserve strength to avoid accidents and failures. The next important term is permissible stress. As the name suggests, permissible stress is the permitted stress for which the object or the component is designed. It is the greatest stress which a designer expects for a machine component or machine. It is used to design the component. Permissible stress is also termed as allowable stress or working stress or design stress. Next we come to design steps. The first general step is material selection. Once we select the material for the specified application, we can find out the ultimate strength or real strength of the material from the data handbooks or from the testing laboratories. Next step is assume suitable factor of safety. Considering various factors and various criteria, we have to decide the suitable factor of safety for the particular application. The third step is we have to calculate the permissible stress. Permissible stress is the ratio of ultimate strength and the factor of safety or it is the ratio of the yield strength and the factor of safety depending upon the type of the material. The next point is how to decide factor of safety. Can we decide it randomly? No. There are definitely number of criteria which we have to think upon which we have to consider before deciding the suitable factor of safety. The first important criteria is degree of safety required. If safety required is more such as human hazards or high financial loss possibility are involved, factor of safety will be higher. For example, if we design bridge or a boiler, in that case, the human hazards involved with those things are very high. And that is why we have to be on the very safer side and definitely the factor of safety will increase. The next point is nature of loading. If you consider static loading, definitely the factor of safety will be lesser as compared to the impact loading. The third point is accuracy of problem formulation. Factor of safety depends how accurately you formulate the problem. For example, lower factor of safety is required in case of precise, precisely determined loads. Higher factor of safety is chosen for design of a bus as compared to an elevator. Why? The reason is very simple. Because in bus, you cannot decide the actual load is. It is okay that we are saying it is a 52 seater bus, but in practical condition, there might be 60 passengers or 70 passengers. But in case of elevator, we can fix the load. We can put a sensor so that if the load is increased beyond a particular limit, the elevator does not move. That is why elevator is simpler as compared to the bus as far as the design is con considered. Next point is degree of homogeneity. The factor of safety will be lower if the material used is of uniform properties. Because if the material is of uniform properties, in that case, you know at all the points the material will behave in the same manner. For example, the ductile materials like steel would require lower factor of safety as compared to cast iron. The reason is simple that the ductile materials like steel are more homogeneous as compared to the cast iron. Also, it depends upon the quality of the raw material supplied by the vendor. If the vendor is quite reliable, in that case, you can trust that the properties of the raw material which are supplied by the vendor are quite reliable and that is why the factor of safety required will be lesser. The next point which we can consider is expected reliability. As the expected reliability increases, factor of safety increases. For example, the components which are going to be used in power stations or defense applications where the compromise with the reliability cannot be made, you have to keep the reliability at a very high point and that is why the factor of safety will be quite high.
The next point which we consider is testing accuracy. Testing conditions affect the value of the factor of safety chosen. Suppose if you are designing a component which can be tested in the running conditions, in that case you will be able to apply all the running conditions to the component and you will get the actual results and that is why you will be able to put the factor of safety lesser. But the components which cannot be tested in the practical conditions, in that case you have to simulate everything into your laboratory and that is why the factor of safety you have to keep on the higher side. Next point is service conditions. Higher the factor of safety is to be chosen for the components which are going to be operated in corrosive or high temperature environment because there are chances of the component getting corroded in those conditions. The components which are going to be used in dry areas or desert areas which require lesser factor of safety as compared to the components which are going to be used in the coastal areas. The next important point is manufacturing processes. If the quality of the manufacturing methods used is good, the factor of safety required is lesser. Why? The manufacturing process considers two points. One is money, machine and the second one is the labor. If labor is skilled enough, if the machine is of good quality, in that case you are confident that the component will be produced as per the tolerances required as per the dimensions specified. That is why if the manufacturing processes are of the required accuracy, in that case your factor of safety will be lesser. The next point is experience of the design engineer. It is a very important and very practical point. Newer component needs higher factor of safety as compared to the repeated product. It is quite simple point that if the product is going to be produced for the first time, in that case definitely you don't know the practical conditions. And that is why the factor of safety which you are going to put on the higher side. Similarly, if a design engineer is of lesser experience, in that case also he is going to keep the factor of safety on the higher side. So definitely the factor of safety is going to be reduced with your experience with the, your experience of design engineer or with the experience of the product. The most important point is degree of economy desired because as the factor of safety increases the cost of the material will increase. Reason is very simple as the factor of safety increases the material is going to be costlier. The manufacturing processes, manufacturing machine, the labor is going to be more skilled. You have to pay more for the skilled labor. You have to purchase costlier machine. You have to put better testing methods. You have to put better quality control department. And that is why the cost will be increased. So your budget, your cost, production cost, everything is to be considered while designing the factor of safety. As a whole, if I conclude, everything into a single point in that case it becomes factor of safety depends upon the uncertainty and fear of loss factor of safety will be higher if the uncertainty is higher because the amount of uncertainty associated with all the conditions which we have discussed above the factor of safety will rise similarly the fear the human hazards the financial loss as much as the human hazards fear is there the factor of safety will be higher. We can discuss, we can consider one example here also. That is, for example, a hollow steel column of external diameter 250 mm has to support an axial load of 4000 kN. If the ultimate stress for the steel column is 480 N per mm square, find the internal diameter of the column allowing a factor of safety of 4. The factor of safety here is 4 and the ultimate strength is the 480 newton per mm square. So the step which we have discussed earlier, you have to calculate the permissible stress. So the permissible stress here is 480 divided by the 4 that is 120 newton per mm square. Now this 120 newton per mm square is to be considered for the designing purpose. Sectional area required is P by sigma that is load divided by the permissible stress which you get as a area. And finally, you can apply the formula of area for the column as pi by 4 d1 square minus d2 square and you can find out the final diameter that is the internal diameter of the 170 mm. So the safe stress, you have to take into account the safe stress as 120 newton per mm square. I hope you understand the factor of safety and you will consider more and more example to understand the same. Thank you.